I started my CEO career in venture, um, meaning as a venture-backed CEO. And the company that I joined was Zablet, which was funded by Kleiner Perkins, where Aileen worked. So that's how we first met. And then Chris is a partner at Andreessen Horowitz. So obviously Ben Horowitz in that link, but I'm now um, an investor through the Cultural Leadership Fund. Um, and Chris and I met through that end. So I figured both sides of venture, this would be a really fun conversation given all that's going on in the world. But I wanted to start back mm -hmm. at the beginning. So Aileen, here's this young woman hired by Vinod, Vinod's only female CEO. Matter of fact, I think it might've been the only female CEO in the firm. I know, um, I think that's all we were. Yeah, I think I was actually. Um, so here I am showing up to this company called Zaplet. So I never asked you this, but what did you think? <laughs> what was going through your mind? <laughs> I was thrilled because I think we, you know, back in the day, gosh, it's hard to imagine, like we used to all fly to the CEO uh, retreat once a year, right? And uh, there were not a lot of women there, you know, especially there were spouses, but not a lot of actually like CEOs. You probably were the only one, maybe there was one other. Um, and on the investment side, I may have been the only woman for a while. And then a couple of years later, we hired a few more women. So Shelly and I became friends because partially like we were the only women there, but I was just so impressed. I mean, in this whole sea of men, you being basically the CEO of this like hot company, uh, that had these like, you know, very hot, hard to potentially hard to manage, but very smart founders, um, and that you were just this like very well esteemed uh, executive, I just thought was awesome. So I kind of glommed onto Shelly and I was like, can, can you hang out with me? Will you be my friend? <laughs> so, and we've been friends ever since. <laughs> Absolutely, so true, so true. Um, and it's really interesting um, when you think about it because I think about where venture was there in opportunities and just where it is now. I'm not gonna mention how many years, but where it is yes. now, it's just, it's just really you know, exciting. I mean, you know, you both now. Oh, Chris, you have your shirt on. I was like, I was scrambling. That's why I joined a little bit late because I had the shirt out and it disappeared. And so I'm like calling around my house. Where's the shirt? I've been wearing it all day. <laughs> well, good. I appreciate that. Oh, and I love your backdrop too, Chris. Look at that. You changed it up. Yes. Hey, he is good. on brand. On yes. brand. <laughs> well done, right. friend. So both of you guys have pursued your dreams of indeed launching your own funds, right? Managing your own funds. You know, I'd love to hear, Chris, maybe you want to start, but you know, how do you see both the opportunity today in terms of for entrepreneurs with all that's yeah. going on? No, absolutely. Well, first and foremost, uh, congratulations. Officially, officially, we've all been waiting for the day. So get your books in store. Yeah. And, uh, I do have my book. <laughs> all right. Yeah, <laughs> all right then. <laughs> And Aileen, it's so good to see you. It's been a minute, but I, I, I do. I remember like in our, all of our chats and, and, and hey, you've been super helpful in terms of also just helping me get to this point right now. So it's good, good to see you. And, and oh, it's great we'll, to see you. That will all continue rocking. So um, for me, like, you know, just now working in, in, in venture and seeing the future of entrepreneurship, I'm super excited about the possibilities of of not only just creating innovation outside of traditional Silicon Valley ecosystems, but really you know, leveraging technology and, and the work that we're doing to really create a more inclusive uh, landscape within the future of tech. Um, you know, I think that it, it's, there, there's so many opportunities and especially in a world where we're at today where, um, you know, we're all connected online and, and especially now that we're not going into the offices like we used to and now you're really starting to see this, this connection point all around the country of you know, entrepreneurs talking with investors and people starting new businesses. And to me, it's, it's just very exciting to see the future of, of the industry where it's not just focusing specifically on Silicon Valley, but now really having, um, you know, meaningful companies and opportunities all around the country and in, in even possibly the world. I heard somebody say hello from Paris. So Annabelle, how you doing? Uh, and so, <laughs> and so, you know, I think that it really just is, is a very exciting time. And, uh, you know, we're, we're extremely to be, we're extremely happy to, and, and to really roll up our sleeves to the cultural leadership fund and, and really just make a difference while, while having, uh, you know, a fun time doing it at the same time. That's great. How about you? How That's about you, so Aileen? True. I mean, 
Look, we, I think we've made progress, right? We're all here, which is great. And our crew is here and all the Shelly fans are here. And so I think that's great. We've got a long way to go. Uh, you know, obviously what's going on in the country and, uh, you know, when you look at the numbers, we haven't made nearly as much progress, both I think in terms of culture or in terms of real like metrics in terms of inclusion and diversity um, at the top and at the bottom. Uh, in tech, at least. And so, but I am hopeful that it's better than it's ever been, and it's just going to continue to get better, you know, and that's us supporting each other and uh, creating more on ramps and more opportunities for people to realize that all kinds of people can be successful in tech. Uh, and then also to help people uh, realize the bias and realize the different ways that people have not been included or where it hasn't really been fair and to give people opportunities to change the game. But I think that's why it's funny. Cause like when we met, when I started, I mean, the message to women and minorities was kind of like, you know, zip it. Like, don't mm -hmm. ever talk about how it's hard. Don't ever talk about how you're different. Don't ever talk about the microaggressions or the, I like to call them the macroaggressions, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like just be happy you're here. And that was kind of my attitude. Like, I'm just, I mean, I wasn't in tech before I got the job. I was the first woman. I just felt lucky to be there. And I just kept my head down and I just, I just ate it, you know, in terms of like all the shit that you have to deal with. And um, that's why I love the name of this book, right? Because- <laughs> Such a good cover title. This is the, you know, like that is the way to get people to basically just be sheep is to just tell them, hey, like, shut it don't talk about it and pretend and make my life easier don't make it hard for me and don't make me uncomfortable and fortunately that is no longer the world we live in and we are no we're not gonna we're not gonna do that anymore because we're gonna all read this book and follow shelly's wisdom <laughs> and change the game exactly and do yeah. it in an unapologetic way <laughs> yeah there you go now listen and honestly i am really optimistic i'm optimistic because i do believe that every people are indeed stepping forward they're saying hey listen i'm here Here's who I am, and I am going to bring myself right to whatever it is that I that I'm trying to do, and absolutely part of what I'm trying to do with this book is just give people, you know, empowerment is such an old-fashioned word, but I just want to inspire and impact, you know, give them tools and strategies and things to pull on so they can actually go and get what they want. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm 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 excited. I'm excited. I'm excited tech-wise. I mean, is there anything? from a tech standpoint that you guys are particularly paying attention to right now that have you excited? Um, I, I, I'm just, I'm just very interested in just how the world is going to move, you know, in a post COVID stance and really just super excited that, 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 that now we are, we're having to innovate and having to create these new models, whether it's in the education space, whether it's even, you know, in the virtual hangout world with what we're doing right now, you know, I think that there's so many different opportunities, but, uh, kind of to tie it, tie it all back, I think that what we're going to see in the future is now problems being solved that weren't traditionally addressed and, and, and through technology. And so that's why it's so important for all of us to really, um, you know, whether it's as investors, making sure we're finding entrepreneurs that look like us and, and understand our values to really kind of going outside of our way and, and sharing conversations like this to really help inspire the next generation entrepreneur. And so, you know, for me, I'm super excited of, of, of anything that's going to come in the way uh, and just ready, ready, ready to help support uh, the next, the next, the next best person to come into the game. <laughs> All right. I totally agree. I think, um, you know, we talk about it internally now and, you know, five years we never would have, or 10 years ago, we never would have in terms of like, we still get pitched week after week by, like, you know, three white guys who live together or work together and been talking about startups with each other forever. And I, I'm so excited about this book and this community about how do we change conversations that high school kids have with each other or college kids have with each other or colleagues have with each other when we can actually, especially be back in person together and have groups of people, mixed gender, mixed race, mixed orientations, brainstorming ideas, going out for lunch, changing up who you spend time with so that we really like, I will feel like we did not drive a truck through the opportunity that we have if five years from now, the people who are pitching us every week are not different because that's okay. the opportunity we have. Absolutely. Um, and every study shows that that's how we get better outcomes. That's how we create better cultures. And so that's what we, we all have to bond together and do that. And so I'm psyched that we're a team.
Mm-hmm. Yep. One, listen, one, 100%, right? 100%. We're all giving our, our messages and trying to make our impact in our ways. And I am bullish. I am definitely bullish about, about the future. So real quick, and then we'll wrap up. Any key takeaways or anything that surprised you in reading the book, you guys? One quick thing each, maybe? Yeah, no, I think to me, the, if, there's, if there's, there was a couple things that really surprised me. I think the one was just how simple uh, it was. And like, it's not, some books you, you think, especially coming from Silicon Valley, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to, you know, do a PhD manual or understand this. <laughs> I think like for you, Shelly, like you were able to take the experiences, which were super, super complex as you learned through this journey. And you were able to just bring them into a concise way that, that made everybody feel like, like you saw us you know, and that you were able to, to relate to problems that were felt like everyday people could, could look at, regardless if you're in technology, it's a book that you have to read and, and, and understanding a blueprint for you to really have a better career and a better, whether it's professional and personal as well. You know, I think one of my favorite chapters is really about cheerleaders and like really trying to find people in your community that really are going to help push you forward when, in time, when times are tough. And that could be in your personal life or in your professional life, but knowing that you're going to have great people to do that. And then also just, you know, making sure that like every move that you're going is your best move and really having to be intentional about, uh, you know, each one of your steps. And so I think that like that, if there's one word, I think that really describes your book outside of unapologetic, it, it, it's, it's intention and, and you really having to put that first foot forward and knowing what you want. And I think for people who are, whether it's they're starting their career and really trying to say, okay, um, how do I actually get my, the, the best foot started? Um, or if you're already in that mid stride and you're trying to figure out what that next chapter is, what you've been able to do is really kind of give people um, that that self confidence to know that they can do it, and that you know, look, everybody else started uh, afraid, and 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 you know, fake it till you make it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. How about you, Aileen? Totally. So I will admit I have not read it yet. So I'm down to be in a book club with any of the folks on this video. If you haven't read it yet, we can read it and maybe we'll have Shelly be our guest and we can ask her questions about like what got left on the cutting room floor. Uh, (laughs) Like, you know, give us the backstory about the story or how did you do this? It's funny, Shelly, when we met and all the years we've been friends, I have to admit, like, I didn't realize like all the purpose and all the, like all the intentionality that was going on because you just like, in meetings or presentations, like you just, you know, you're in the moment. And I didn't, I didn't really realize all the things that were going on behind the scenes. So I'm super excited to read it and to discuss it and to learn from it. 